Amen. Let's give a hand praise to Pastor Land. Amen. Who's ready for the word? May the Lord use you with power. Amen. He Thank has you, the Pastor. Fresh treasure. God bless, church. Who's ready for the word of God? Who's excited for this sermon series? I believe God has something special for us all. I'm excited to preach this word. Man, his decorations are fire. <laughs> it looks so good. I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I'm a sucker for treasure hunting movies. Um, a couple obviously come to mind, like Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm an 80s baby, so I'm a, you know, I like the Goonies. Uh-huh. All right, all right. Y'all can relate. Y'all can relate. There's a couple of modern ones. There's one called Finding Ohana on Netflix. It's pretty fire. Uh, so I enjoy it. I think I know why they do so well at the box office. Now that I pointed it out, you're going to be like, yeah, there are a lot of treasure hunting movies out there. So I'm excited for this series. I love in the treasure hunting movies where the protagonist, the main character, has like this epiphany moment. He's, he's pondering life, basically thinking to himself like, man, there's got to be more to this life. There's got to be something more. And then all of a sudden, they stumble upon a, a treasure map. My sermon today is called Treasure Map. See, in the movies, they stumble upon the treasure map, and it ain't just an ordinary map. You got to hold it up to the sun and turn it sideways. You got to dec decode some encrypted message within it. You, you know, they hold it up, and then, then, then a beam of light shoots through the map, and it hits a rock, and it, and it burns the rock, and it reveals this hidden message of an arrow pointing this way, and then they know what path to go. It's always some, some crazy map, but it ain't, you know, like Google Maps. We got it easy nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So we root for them while they're on this journey to find this treasure. Because we know once they find the treasure, it's going to change their lives. And it promises to deliver them from despair to, you know, from, from the depths of obscurity to, to hope and, and joy and peace and wealth. We want to see them, and we start rooting for the main characters. We want to see them uh, attain this desire of their hearts, this treasure that they're, so, that they're so longing for. We want to see them have that see I told you so moment to all the people who ain't believe it was really a treasure out here. All the haters. Yeah. We want to see them find what they've been searching for. I believe that's why these movies do so well at the box office because we can relate. We all want to find that hidden treasure. We all want to walk into work on Monday morning when we find that treasure, or maybe Tuesday. We're going to make them sweat a little no-call, no-show action because we got the treasure. We ain't got to go, you know what I mean? Bust down on that two weeks' notice and bless everybody with two fingers. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. I said two fingers. Some of y'all disgruntled employees. We pray for y'all later. <laughs> and so I want to ask you as we start this treasure hunting sermon series, what is your treasure? What is it that your heart is longing for? Because if we're honest, we're all searching for something. There's a longing within the human heart that we just can't shake, and it won't, it won't go away. There's an innate feeling within our hearts that there's got to be something more. There's, there's got to be something more to life as we know it, more than all we're physically experiencing here on earth. Everybody's searching for something because there's a, a God-given awareness that there's more to this world than our eyes can see. I believe that's because the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.11 that God has set eternity within the hearts of man. It's that so powerful. There's a divine hope within us. It's like a, it's like a magnet that's pulling our souls. It's pulling our souls, creating this longing for a fulfillment that only God can offer. I don't know if y'all feel me this morning. See, man will scour the ends of the earth and search the depths of the sea. Man will create $10 billion telescopes to explore and discover distant galaxies light years away to try to satisfy that, that urge, that desire within them, searching for some priceless treasure to, to satisfy the longing of their souls. Oh, but in actuality, the only thing, whew, the only treasure that can fully satisfy our human souls lies on the other side of eternity. Can we get an amen in the building this morning? What are you searching for? What treasure are you looking for? 
Because God in his providence, through his son Jesus Christ, by way of his, of his spirit, has given us a divine treasure map from the other side of eternity. And it promises to take you on the greatest journey of your life. I'm here to declare you to you today that there's nothing you can search for on this side of eternity that satisfies the souls of mankind like the word of God. Is there any Bible nerds in here that love the word? That was your time. That was your opportunity to shout if you love the word of God. The Holy Spirit inspired scriptures. There is power to save within the pages of our great word of God, the Bible. There is a power to deliver that lies within the Bible. There's power to clean you. It's a life-giving word, a life-altering word. No book has been more scrutinized. No book has been more studied. No book has been more read. No book has been more purchased than the word of God. No book has meant more to humankind than the word of God. No book has so affected mankind like the truth that is only found within the wisdom of the word of God. Maybe I'm by myself this morning, but I love the word of God. I stand on the word of God. The word of God has helped propel me and my family to eternal life, and I'm grateful. If you're grateful, say amen. Come on, I'm grateful. Can we bless God this morning? Hmm. The inspired word of God is filled with the divine wisdom that we need to live a successful life. The word of God, as we search it, it searches us. The Bible says it is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide bone from marrow. The Bible is such an incredible word, incredible treasure, that when we look into it, we're, we're bombarded with treasure after treasure, after treasure after treasure. And I want to touch on some things today that might be a little difficult to, 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 to hear, but we're going to talk about the truth, the wisdom of the word of God. Y'all ready? Love the word. When you encounter the word of God, it gives us revelation of who God is, how great he is, how mighty he is, his majesty, his spirit, his son, his kingdom. His will for our lives, it gives us revelation, it's eye-opening. It allows us to know about his sovereignty, his faithfulness, his goodness. Come on, somebody. Thank God for the word. Thank God this morning for his inspired word. Hallelujah. His word is the treasure map that we need that provides the wisdom for us to navigate through this life and live a purposeful, powerful meaningful life. It's awesome because he left this, this word for us, the, the Bible, this treasure for us that leads us back to him. It's breathed by his, by his spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is what enables us to have this incredible treasure. Think about it. Over 40 different authors over the span of 1,500 years, on three different continents, in three different languages, all attest to the same God with no errors and no mistakes. I don't know about you, but the word that I believe in my heart is real. It's power. Power to save. Power to heal. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful this morning for the wonderful word of God. Maybe that's because I'm a nerd like that, but I love the word of God. Thank God for this treasure. Let's look at what it says in our, our foundational text. It's Proverbs 2, 1 to 5. It was up on the screen during the video. And this is the King Solomon. He's talking about the unparalleled value that is only found in the word of God. He's talking to one of his sons, he says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom. Concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. The word of God is letting us know that there's treasures to be had when we prioritize the wisdom of his word. It's full of wisdom from cover to cover. This is important because we were not created to roam this earth aimlessly. 
he gives us clear guidance. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet. Woo! A light to my path. And that indicates with every step that we take on this earth, we need God. Every direction we go, every choice we make, every decision that lies before us, every answer, come on somebody, every plan, every move we make should be inspired by the wisdom that are contained within the word of God. Every move. There's no way to achieve wisdom without the word of God. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do you fear him? Do you fear him this morning? I know what you're thinking. If wisdom is so readily available, how come there's so many stupid people roaming the face of the earth? (laughs) Or maybe you you wanted to say foolish. I said stupid. If if, if, If wisdom is so readily available to us, how come so many people do so much dumb stuff? Answer is simple. They don't be in their Bible. People don't read their Bibles. I saw footage uh, <clears throat> of a, a village receiving Bibles translated into their own language for the first time. A tribal people gathered around a runway as a small itty bitty plane lands on the runway, delivering bundles of the word of God transferred into their language for the first time. They're weeping, they're crying. They're they're honoring God with praises of joy and shouting in their native tongue because they can finally read the the un come on somebody the un, un unaltered word of God that their village can be saved that they can know about this great God they're weeping on their faces but according to Christian market research over 82 percent of American Christians only read their Bible during Sunday service. Don't let this be the only time this week that you read the Word of God. Studies show that less than 30% of all Bible-believing Christians will ever read through the entire Bible. Man, that's sad. I I think it's because nowadays, when, when people are looking in their Bible, they're looking for their purpose more than they're looking for Jesus. But if, see, you wouldn't have to look for your purpose if you was looking for Jesus, because if you was looking for Jesus, you would know that your purpose is to look like Jesus, to walk like Jesus, to bless like Jesus, to uplift and encourage like Jesus, to stand on the word of God like Jesus, to do the will of the Father like Jesus. Yeah, come on, somebody, to stand firm in the faith like Jesus. It's to be Christ-like. What I need to be worried about my purpose for when the Bible says in him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. I am who I am because of the grace of God and his word has freed me from the depths of hell. By myself, I'm by myself. Let me get back on track. People don't be in these, don't be in them scriptures like that, don't be in the scriptures. People don't be in the word and they think they can still get to the treasure that it offers. Why is that? People would much rather navigate through life using their own wisdom. The Bible calls it worldly wisdom. They've acquired through their life experiences worldly wisdom. Through society and news and school and culture, we desire to get through life by ways that are socially acceptable by the masses. The wisdom of the world. And maybe that's why God's wisdom has been under attack since the beginning of time. In the Garden of Eden, God told Adam, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And here here come the serpent. He's implying that God is holding out on Adam and Eve some sort of forbidden treasure, forbidden or hidden wisdom. He says that it was desired to make one wise. And so they eat of the tree, hoping to find this hidden treasure of wisdom. When the reality is the treasure was the wisdom of God's word the whole time. And see, from that time to this day, many, if not all, of the issues and problems and troubles that hinder humanity are because we esteem worldly wisdom above the the wisdom of God. 
when time after time after time and time again, the wisdom of God has, has shown itself and proven superior to the wisdom of man. There's a way that looks right that everybody's going, so maybe I should go this way. That's worldly wisdom. The Bible tells us when you go different paths other than the path that God has marked out for you, see every path that God directs you on leads to treasure of some sort. The Bible tells us in, in the wisdom literature, Proverbs 14, 12, that there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. So when we go our own, own route, it's, it's, it's implying that we're going to hit dead ends. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. It's Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. What if I told you, even if you don't own a Bible, you already have a map. Even if you don't believe in Jesus, even if you're not a Christian, maybe you are. Either way, you already have a map. It's the map of your own understanding. It's made up of the worldly wisdom of society, culture, family, media, school, occupation, emotions, feelings, religion. And your map accumulates several little GPS pins as you journey through this life. Over the course of our lives, we'll be bombarded with bad directions, misinformation, false ideologies, and lies. And this leads to pain and heartache and traumatic experience of all sorts. And when these things happen, our brains, they create these GPS pins in our minds that we remember if ever we encounter these things in the future. What does that do? Well, that dictates how we respond and react. It, it, it dictates and shapes who we become, shapes our way of thinking and how we see the world. It, it, it dictates what we believe, what we don't believe, what we value and what we treasure. And our understanding ultimately maps out the roads that we travel in our lives. One of my earliest memories was a traumatic memory. When I was a very young kid, it created a GPS pin in my mind that I always went back to whenever I experienced something like that experience. It dictated how I lived, what I did, how I thought, the people that I talked to, where I went, what roads I traveled. It was dictated because of that GPS pin. When I was in high school, a simple statement was said to me, but I never forgot it. I can remember where I was when it happened. A GPS pin in my mind went off because somebody told me I would never be anything. I would never go anywhere in life. So when I, when I, when I graduated high school, became a man, anytime I messed up, bang, the GPS pin. Went back to there. It affected my confidence. It affected what I did. It affected how I moved and what I thought about myself. It altered my thinking and the path that I took. And so I'm saying this to say that we all have our maps. What's pinned on yours? And the problem is the maps of our own understanding they don't lead to the treasure that God has for you. I believe he wants us to know this morning that you can't get to the treasure that he offers with outdated maps. I don't know what people have told you. I don't know what lies you believed. I don't know what you think you've done that you can't be forgiven from. Come on, I don't know about you, but I got a different map. I'm on a different path. They might have called you ugly, but the word of God says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. I'm on a different, somebody got to say, I got the map. You can't lie to me anymore because I got the map now. I got the map. Come on, somebody say, I got the map. Yeah, they might have called you incompetent, but, but the Bible says you got the mind of Christ. You can't lie to me. I got the map, baby. I got the map. They might have said you no good or you useless, but the word of God says that you are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Oh, baby, you can't lie to me. I got the map. Anybody else in this place got the map? I'm on a different path. I remember what you said about me. You said I would go nowhere in life, but my map says otherwise. Come on and give God a shout of praise. Somebody say I got the map. They can't lie to us in this place no more. I stand on the word of God for my life. My trajectory is different. 
The Lord has unpinned some GPS markers in my brain, and I feel this thing. I'm ready to preach. Y'all ready? <laughs> Woo! Got the map. The only way to get to the treasure is to follow the map. You got to follow the map. The only way to get to what God has for us. Thank you, Jesus. See, I want to take just a few minutes and I'll be out your way. I want to touch on three points from our foundational text. Three quick points. Because when you have the map, you got to remember some things. You got to remember some things. I want to just... Make some things plain for you for just a few moments. We're going to look at verses 1 to 3. My first point says stay on course. Real simple, real easy. Stay on course. Touch your neighbor and say stay on course. Verses 1 to 3 says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom. Everybody just touch your ears real quick. Not your neighbor's ears, your ears. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. See, what good is a map if you ain't going to stay on course? (laughs) Verses 1 to 3 is literally the total opposite of leaning on your own understanding. They depict King Solomon talking to his son, letting him know that the treasures he's talking about are super important. To treasure his commands and lean in for wisdom and understanding. He tells him to make his ears attentive, to to tune his ears to what he's saying so that he can capture the priceless gems of wisdom. And this is what it looks like to stay on course. It's total focus. I don't know if you've ever driven somewhere for a 24-hour period or longer, but it's difficult to stay on course. You got to look at the maps. You got to look at the road signs. You got to gas up. You got to make sure your meters in the car are good. You got oil. You got to make sure that you got food and possibly want somebody else to travel with you because it's dangerous to go more than 24 hours without, you know. So, but, but now multiply that by a lifetime. You got to stay on course. The only way to the treasure is to follow the map. Some people in here don't want to follow the map. Y'all know who I'm talking about, too. Go ahead and nudge your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Got the GPS coordinates on lock, you still end up somewhere else. (laughs) Never mind. I've been there myself, though. um, Two years ago in July, family took a trip to Puerto Rico. It's about as far as my, my, my Espanol go. So we get to the airport, I leave my family at the luggage claim, I go down and around to Enterprise Rentals, really far away on the opposite side of the building, it seemed like. I get in there, I program my, <clears throat> my Bluetooth, you know, because we rocking, we in the motherland, so I'm in there by myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm half Boricua, so my GPS pin going off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, how do I get back around to luggage, though? He, my man at Enterprise was like, just go straight, and it's going to loop around, you can't miss it. I was like, oh, cool. Start driving a minute out and bopping. Thank go hombre, think about, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> More fun go out here. <laughs> Can't wait, I'm home, baby. Then I, 10 minutes go by, I'm like, oh snap, I'm lost in a foreign land. I get my GPS, and then I pin the, <laughs> I pin the airport because it didn't lead me back around like you said. It literally brought me out. It was a horse and a guy on horseback galloping across. I'm like, where am I at? Wifey calls me, where you at? I'm like, I'm lost. <laughs> what do you mean you lost? I'm lost. Like when you don't know where you are, I'm lost. I had to explain the definition of being lost. She's like, at the airport? I'm like, no, in the city. She's like, in the city? I'm like, yeah, well, maybe in the country. I almost hit a horse. I can't really talk. You're messing up my GPS right now. Super frustrated. I'm hangry. Get off those thornies. I'm like, yo, man, what's going on? So I, so the, the coordinates say in a mile, make a right. I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm not really listening to it. I'm, I'm like... GPS. I use GPS all the time. I see where it wants me to go up a mile. Okay. I know about the distance of a mile out here using my own understanding. So I'm driving. And then it recalculates. I'm like, what? Why is it recalculating? Then it says, go 500 feet, make 11. I'm like, all right. And I go, and then it's already recalculating. I didn't even get 500. I'm like, what is going on? Then it's like two miles, make a U turn. I'm like, all right. So then I'm going, and it's, and, 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 and I'm past, it's recalculating again. I'm like, all right, something wrong with my GPS out here. Maybe it's because I'm in a foreign land. Still U.S. territory, but you know, I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> I'm all upset because what, what should have took me five minutes ended up taking me 30 minutes. 
I'm mad at the enterprise guy, though. You're going to tell me go straight, got me out here like a Taurus when this is my homeland. <laughs> See, we can actually have the directions and still get lost. We can, you know what I mean? We all walking around with Bibles, but we still falling into sin, stumbling into temptation. We still out here lost like we ain't got the directions for life. Maybe I'm by myself. Come on, I was transparent on what happened in PR. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me this morning? I don't know. Touch your neighbor and say, stay on course. Stay on course. Are you in the will of God? See, I literally got lost while I was already at my destination. I was at the airport. I just had to get back to the... You can get lost while you're already at your destination. Are you in the will of God this morning? Maybe you're in the will of God. You're already where you need to be, but maybe you're leading on something that's not strong enough to support what only God was meant to uphold. I don't know. Stay on course. My second point. When you got the map to the treasure, you got to get active. You got to go and get it. Somebody say, go and get it. Again, real simple, trying to bust it down, make it real plain for you. Go and get it. Verse 4 says, search for them as you would for silver and seek them like hidden treasures. You got the treasure map. Would you sit around if you had a treasure map that was worth millions? Would you just leave it folded up and not even open it? God says he is a rewarder to those who seek him, according to Hebrews 11.6. 11, and listen, I can testify. The wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God has totally transformed my family tree. It was dingy and broken and busted down, and, but he's revitalized our lineage. He's revitalized our family tree because of the wisdom of the word of God. There's royalty in our bloodline. Eternal significance by the grace of God is our portion. Is there anybody that feels what I'm saying this morning? Thank God for his wisdom found in his word. Hallelujah. It's preserved my life. His wisdom has guarded me when I should have been in jail or dead. Or Man, thank God for his wisdom. Freed me from the grave. I love about this this, this verse of scripture, Proverbs, that these verses are filled with action. You get a real sense of what has to be done. Solomon's like, receive my words. He's employing his son to do what he's telling him. Treasure my commands. Be attentive. Incline your heart. Tune your ears. Call out. Raise your voice. Seek. Search for what? For understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and insight. This is serious business. If you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasures, there's almost nothing else Solomon could have said to, to just impress upon him how important it was to gather the wisdom of the word of God. I mean, what would make you truly search without ceasing? What would make you search endlessly? The TV remote. Oh, yeah, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The TV remote. Why? Because it's the greatest exercise device known to man. Nothing has caused more spontaneous workouts than the misplacing of the TV remote. Don't let it be a series on that you want to watch, a championship game, a presidential debate. <laughs> y'all out here, y'all ain't never did more squats than when you're looking for the remote, lifting up the couch. Then you go on this couch. You go in the room. Your steps ain't never been as high. You're hitting step goals because you're just looking for the room. You're searching all over the house. Then you start working out. You start working out your quadriceps and your front delts because you're bending down on it and you're hanging up in here. You ain't never did no thrusters before, but you're out here doing a new thing. God doing it. No, you're doing it. You're exerting all this energy. You're seeking and searching like never before. You walk to the, to the refrigerator and open it up like it's in there. You're lifting up the vegetables. You don't need vegetables. You ain't never, when you're searching for that remote, you're lifting up babies. You're doing all kind of calisthenics. Because you never know when you might have to change the channel. Woo, but if we search for the, the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding as diligently as we search for the TV remote, 
We can change more than just the channel. We can change our minds. We can change our speech up in here. We can change our way of thinking. We can change the trajectory of our family tree if we would search and seek for the wisdom found in the word of God. Hallelujah. You got to get active out here. Go and get it. You got the treasure. Why don't you go and get it this morning? Somebody say go and get it. Amen, amen, amen. See, when you got the treasure map, you got to let go of everything else. You got to make room for the abundance of treasures that God has in store for you. You got to let go of some things. Yeah, hold on. Uh, you're holding on, about to get arthritis. Uh, carpal tunnel. You're holding on to some treasures that you held above and esteemed higher than our God. Ooh. You got to let go of some things. You're holding on to an old way of thinking. It's leading to destruction. You got to let go of that old map. Rip it up, tear it up. Let it go. Verse 5 says, then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you'll gain the knowledge of God. Wow. You got to let go of some things, though. Because folly and foolishness is really out here. It's our natural state before we meet the Lord. Folly and foolishness will follow us all the days of our lives until we come to the understanding and knowledge of our great God. Do you fear him? Do you fear him this morning? <laughs> See, what's interesting is we won't just stumble upon the fear of the Lord. Oh, but we'll, 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 we'll stumble upon some old folly and foolishness and perversion and temptation and sin. Do you fear him? Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is a holy reverence. It's a holy awareness, a holy acknowledgement that someone greater than us actually exists out here. There is someone worth worshiping with my whole heart, with my whole body, with everything that I have. Do you fear him this morning? It's knowing that we belong to him and we treasure him above all. That's the fear of the Lord. All the seeking and the searching and the inclining our hearts and the tuning of our ears leads to us seeking and finding. Coming to the end of ourselves, coming to the knowledge of the, of the, of the great God that we serve. Coming to the fear of the Lord. Do you fear him? When you fear him, he truly becomes supreme to us. I wonder if, we're not, if, if, if right now... I'm in a house with people that truly fear the Lord. Do you fear him this morning? When you fear him, old things pass away. All things become new. We receive revelation that he is on a throne all by himself. See, church, what will you do when you've amassed a treasure this great? What will you do? You won't be able to hold on to anything else in your hand. You'll have to let go of some things. You'll have to make room when you've amassed a treasure like this. In order to possess it, you'll have to let go of some things. Will you let it all go today for Jesus? Will you let it all go for the kingdom of God? Will you let it all go for the treasures that he has in store for you, church? Maybe I'm preaching to myself, but I'm asking this morning, will you let everything go because God is supreme? Where will you put it when you've amassed a treasure this great? Where will you put it? It's too great to fit in a mind that's cluttered with your own understanding. You have to let go of some things. Your old way of thinking, your old nature. What you used to call treasures pale in comparison to the greatness of our wonderful God, our supreme and sovereign God. You got to let go of some things. Jesus says in Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field that's a wise man he let it all go he let go of everything and he bought the field because it contains the endless treasures of God found only in his kingdom will you let it all go this morning see this is where Adam and Eve got caught up Adam and Eve would have let go of the fruit that filled their hands if their hearts had been filled with the fear of the Lord. Do you fear him this morning? 
Because all the searching and the seeking that we do should lead us to the throne of grace. To the one seated on the, on the mercy seat. It should lead us to him. If you could just stand to your feet this morning. This treasure is so beautiful. I told you this might be a little tough message. But if we all could just grow in our reverence to our great God, if we all could just recognize the map that he has given us actually contains treasures beyond our wildest imagination. Are you digging in? Are you digging in the scriptures? Do you see them as holy? Do you revere what God has done just so that we can have his word with us? I remember when I first came to Jesus, I didn't even know Matthew 13, 44 about the man with the, with the field. But when I first came to Jesus, that's how I used to explain it to people when they asked me because I had a transformation that was just crazy from who I used to be. It was almost like it was overnight. And the only way I could explain it was I found this buried treasure and I want to share it with you. But I kept kind of getting met with a wall. Every time I mentioned it to a family member or a friend, it was just like, oh, okay, they, they just wasn't with it. I couldn't understand why. I was telling them about this buried treasure, but what they were hearing is, oh, you worship a dead, a dead God? I was telling them about this buried treasure that I found, and they were like, oh, you, you got the blood of a dead man on you? I was telling them about this beautiful treasure that they could have because I wanted them to have it too and experience it. But all they heard was, oh, you worship someone who was whipped beyond recognition with the skin torn off his back and his bones exposed? What do you worship him for? And I, I get it now because the word of God says the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. This treasure that we found is so great. And I wonder if this message has touched anybody in this place. Maybe we look at how we revere the Lord and in our, in our regular, everyday goings-ons, and we adjust some things. If that's you, I just want to pray and open up the altar. I don't know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's something welling up within you that says, you know what? The message of the cross doesn't sound like foolishness to me. There's something here. There's something there. Maybe, they, maybe it doesn't happen overnight like it did with me. Maybe it's, maybe it's gradual. But I want to invite you into the kingdom of God and take this, take this walk, this journey with us as we hunt for the hidden treasures that are only found in the word of God. I'm going to let it breathe for a minute.